I think he's very charismatic and uh, he's very smart. He really grasps the most important things uh, that are required uh, to make our country great. Uh, he's a great visionary. He articulates his vision very clearly and very crisply. Uh, he has this quality about him that he inspires people to believe in him because he leads by example. Well, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about that uh, Prime Minister Modi is coming to Silicon Valley. Uh, he's impressed me right off the bat after he became Prime Minister with his vision and uh, his outlook uh, and also technology savviness and how he's using technology to really communicate with people. As you know, one of the most important things uh, a leader of a company or a leader of a country has to do is to have vision and be able to articulate it and communicate it to millions of people in this case so they clearly understand what is it that uh, we need to get done and I think he's doing an outstanding job in my opinion of communicating that uh, and clearly beyond communication then we all have to implement that vision and that takes a lot more energy resources and time and part of the reason why I tell people who get impatient with hey what's happening here is he's been a prime minister for a year not much has happened it takes a long time for these things to happen but it starts with the first step which is to really articulate a clear vision uh, I'm also particularly excited about him coming to Silicon Valley because Silicon Valley as you know is the epicenter of innovation in the world and also it's a little secret not very well known that America's dominance both in terms of economic dominance and military dominance really is a result of the innovation and technology that they possess. So just from that perspective alone I believe uh, it's important for India which is soon going to be the third largest economy in the world to truly come and understand what kind of environment and culture do you need to cultivate to foster innovation. So from that point of view, I think this is a very good visit for him to firsthand see and visit companies, meet with people and understand how it is done. Now, there are really basically two ways that in USA uh, the innovation has been fostered. And that's something that I really would like him to take away with him uh, back to India and see how we can instill some of that in our own ways in our environment. The first way the innovation is uh, fostered in America is through agencies like National Science Foundation or DARPA, which is a defense research uh, agency for projects. Again, a very little known fact that internet that everybody uses today all over the world without even thinking actually is a creation. Its foundation was left, uh, it was uh, 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 led by uh, some work that was done by ARPANET, which was really a uh, DARPA-funded project within the Na National S uh, Science Foundation. So here we see this huge difference is man made to the mankind, the internet has, and it came out of the government funding. Now it's very interesting how these projects are done here. The funding from the government is not done as a venture capitalist. And that's one thing I want to point out because recently I saw an article that our finance minister has set aside 10,000 crore rupees for uh, soft loans and venture capital type investments. My advice to him would be to really take that money, which is very precious, one and a half billion dollars, and instead of trying to invest it like we do as private equity investors, I'm also a venture capitalist in India with a fund instead of really uh, deploying that capital as venture capitalist, uh, which is a very risky job because venture capital, uh, majority of the companies that you invest in do not succeed, they fail. And it's a very uh, challenging effort. Nevertheless, a very important effort. What the government should be doing is actually funding basic research in universities in India. This is how they do it here. So all of the basic work that you see here, technology you see has come from universities. And how does it work in universities? 
the funding is given by agencies like National Science Foundation or DARPA to various professors who are working on different different type of projects and a million dollars or two million dollars and they in turn take these graduate students who are doing masters or PhD program to do the research for them. So it's really very low cost labor that's creating all the innovation and it has multiple benefits uh, if it's done correctly in India. For example, one of the challenges we face, uh, we regret about the fact that we have great IITs and fantastic uh, Indian Institute of Sciences. However, they don't uh, end up uh, ranking in the top 100 universities in the world. And the reason for that is even though they create uh, people like uh, you know Sundar who's heading up Google or Sanjay Mehrotra who ends up SanDisk, they uh, are not doing research in those campuses. And all of us who came here after doing an undergraduate in India ended up doing a postgraduate master's degree here, did that research and learned how to do the research, to cultivate a mindset of research. It has a different mindset of creativity, of problem solving than a service type of a job where you're told what to do and then you do what you do versus in here, you are not told what to do. You need to create in your own mind uh, how a solution to a problem will be. So this is a fundamental change that we need to make and this can be brought about by really setting in place this type of an environment where the funding goes to these universities and in turn universities not only become elevated because they will be doing research but also start writing patents. So one of the things that we don't have in our country is a lot of intellectual property. In my recent article I wrote about an innovation in Economics Times, I talked about how an iPhone that costs $547, the cost of component is about $178, uh, 360 odd dollars is the profit that Apple makes, only $7 is paid to Foxconn that assembles the whole phone, very small amount of money. But the person who has created, the company that's created intellectual property takes bulk of the gains. So in India, we really need to work on both levels. We need to work on the high end because we have tremendous talent has already been well established in the world in software. Um, and software, as we know, is eating the world. These are the words uh, that were used by in recent Harvard's and it's, uh, it's a famous article uh, in Harvard. Uh, and it's true that software today is eating the world because hardware has become a commodity. In that environment, we seem to be very well placed as a country to really capitalize on that software and be on the forefront of it. What we need to shift is from a mindset of services to a mindset of uh, innovation, creativity, problem solving, um, and intellectual property. And I, I think that's one end of the, the, the spectrum that we need to work on. And making India is not just a matter of pride of making in India, but really deploying tens of millions of our youth who don't all have to go to engineering colleges and get you know higher degrees, we need to get them jobs. And to provide them jobs, they need to be uh, doing a lot of manufacturing, for example. And we need to bring about that manufacturing in-house too. And I already saw some good steps being taken in terms of relationship with Foxconn, which is world's largest manufacturing company in, in Taiwan, in China, to, to come to Maharashtra and India to uh, both leverage our low cost labor to create more profitability for them and in turn not only create jobs but create an environment and know-how and ecosystem of how these things are done. We need to learn that too. Just like Chinese really learned that 30 years ago as American companies first went to China to show them how the manufacturing is done. So on both sides of the equation this needs to be done. In case of uh, IT services, you don't, you can get away without building a robust infrastructure because usually what you need is infrastructure in terms of internet, not necessarily in terms of roads and bridges. But if you're doing manufacturing, you need ports, you need warehouses, you need roads, you need a web of all these things interconnected. And that is the other thing that we as a country have to do. And unfortunately, I hear that our land bill did not pass, but part of the reason that land bill is important is that we need to create an efficient infrastructure in our country. One of the things that uh, 
uh, troubles me is that many a people who do want to uh, participate in India's tremendous growth, both in technology and, and economy, uh, tend to find this infrastructure backward enough that they try to resident themselves in either Singapore or Hong Kong or some nearby countries. They don't want to live in India because of the pollution or the issue of traffic and infrastructure. So clearly, uh, if we can take one step forward in uh, creating smart cities, and I understand we are in, in uh, collaboration with uh, Cisco right here in our backyard, uh, pursuing that uh, is a very good theme. And Internet of Things is really a, a methodology of connecting things together to make them more efficient and more communicative. And India is ready for it. Uh, India has this unique advantage by being so backward for so long, it tries to leapfrog every time when it comes out with something. So we leapfrog all the desktop, laptops for consumers and went straight into using smartphones and cell phones. And I think same way in smart cities, hopefully we can leapfrog and build our new cities which are even more modern than the cities here because we, we really haven't done anything in the past so no I definitely hope so you know takeaways for him in, in the sense that uh, when he goes away from here uh, and sits back and says okay fine I went to Silicon Valley what did I get out of it I would say first like I said in my earlier uh, monologue that uh, what are the fundamental changes that need to be made in our country's uh, ability to innovate. What kind of culture, what kind of mindset, what kind of policies, what kind of systems, procedures, fundings in universities, all those things that I talked about need to be done in order to cultivate and nurture and foster uh, both innovation and entrepreneurship. I think that's the biggest theme I would hope you take away. And second is, how do I leverage not only the Silicon Valley technologies and technologists, because as we said, it's not just Vindham and Sundar and few other people who are really interested in helping our country because we are from India, but even other people like Mark Zuckerberg and, 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 and a host of other uh, American companies also want to help India because it's also mutually benef beneficial to them to help India. And the key would be for him to say, how do I leverage it now? How do I bring it about? It's one thing to meet people and have them want to help. How do I bring about what type of structure should I put in place so that we can leverage this help that they're providing? I think there's a excitement about the change that Modi has brought about, where there's again a feeling in Indian diaspora that things can change and India can be put back on track uh, for becoming what is worthy of and as a nation and therefore everybody's rooting for him and wanting to see him hear him and help him